Hello, and thank you for joining me. My name is Dr. Marlena Lester. I'm the director of advising here with engineering, and so I'm at home practicing social distancing, so Dr. Lee and I will remove our masks. So again, welcome to those of you who just joined. Um, my name is Marlena Lester. I'm the Director of Advising here within Engineering Education, and I have with me my colleague and Associate Professor of Engineering Education, Dr. Walter Lee. Um, he can do some formal uh, introductions if you'd like to add some more details to that. But I will um, manage our presentation and start that, Dr. Lee. So our, our plan for today is to go through a few simple slides to showcase the first year engineering program here at Virginia Tech, uh, General Engineering, and then open it up to Q&A. Right. Good afternoon, everyone. So as Dr. Lester has mentioned, I'm Dr. Walter Lee. I'm a sixth year faculty member in the Department of Engineering Education, and I'm also a two-time Hokie myself. So I got my master's and my PhD from Virginia Tech as well. So I've been around the university since 2010. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the first year engineering program to provide some context because some of the things we do here are different than some of the other institutions you might be looking at. And I think it's helpful to provide some of that context. So the first year engineering program here is celebrating over 50 years as a starting point for Virginia Tech engineering degrees. And that's one of the things you want to keep in mind is that we are unique in that all of the first year students start as a general engineering student. And then after the end of that first year, you can actually apply to change into a specific engineering degree. So regardless of your interest, everyone starts as a general engineering student in the Department of Engineering Education. So within the first year program, the instruction team is a wide variety of people with background in industry as well as education research. And courses are typically co-taught by an uh, instructor or a faculty member, as well as graduate teaching assistants. So the picture here is an illustration of the teaching team from this past fall. So as you can see, I have taught in the course along with a lot of my colleagues as well. So the first year program, so when you are a first year engineering student, in addition to being a general engineering major, there are some other courses that are pretty standard to what your first year looks like. So there's two foundations of engineering courses, which I'll talk a little bit more about which are the two ENGE courses. So we have um, ENG 1215 and 1216. You have to take a first year writing course. There is a general chemistry course, a physics course, a, a calculus course, and then there's also the general education courses. Some of this might vary depending on what you already have credit for, depending on where you went to high school or community college at, and what you're kind of bringing in as a, as a student. But this is kind of like the general foundation for being a first year student. And these are the things that you'd have to complete before you can apply to transfer into your major. And within the foundations of engineering courses, so these two courses are spread across the students' first year typically. And within these courses, in addition to trying to introduce you to the wide range of things you can do with an engineering degree and your options at Virginia Tech, there are some key skills and foundational areas that we try to hit. So the engineering design processes overviewed pretty thoroughly in the second course is very heavily focused on design in the First course, you're mostly introduced it. We talk about ethics across both courses, as well as problem solving, and then teamwork and communication skills. So the key with the first year is where we understand that some people might know what they want to do, but a lot of people don't. So we think that it's very helpful to provide that foundation of not only some of those key skills that all engineering's need, but to also give people some time to figure out what it is they're most interested in if there are some engineering degrees that they were not familiar with before they came here. All right, thank you very much. So for those of you who've never been to the Virginia Tech campus, we wanted to kind of give you a highlight of what the uh, beautiful um, drill field looks like within the main Burris Hall section of campus. So maybe you've seen this on um, online and we just wanted to kind of show this to you today for those of you who haven't had an opportunity to visit. It is, of course, a beautiful campus um, and it's flanked. Uh, uh, or showcase through um, Hokie Stone, which is, of course, our facades on all of our buildings within the, um, the Virginia Tech Blacksburg campus. So one of the things that I wanted to touch base with you today about is, as Dr. Uh, Lane mentioned, we do have this common first year experience, and we often get lot, lots of questions about that experience at Virginia Tech. And one of the things that we wanted to highlight in today's conversation is really our first year to second year retention rate. It is one of the highest in the country for engineering programs at 88%. So that's often a question we get through these face-to-face um, -face kind of um, experiences. 
One of the other things that I wanted to highlight is our core disciplines within the College of Engineering. We have everything ranging from aerospace to ocean engineering. So um, we'll start out kind of just showcasing a few of those for you today. We have our aerospace engineering program, and you're, of course, welcome to learn more about these within that first year program, especially within our Foundations of Engineering courses and along with our advising curriculum that we have here in the College of Engineering. We also have Biological Systems Engineering. It's a, a, a wonderful program here at Virginia Tech along with Biomedical Engineering, Chemical Engineering, Civil Engineering, Computer Engineering, Computer Science. We also um, have Construction Engineering Management, which is a unique program for Virginia Tech where it combines the principles of civil engineering, building construction, and also business. We also have our programs in electrical engineering, industrial systems engineering, material science engineering, mechanical engineering, mining engineering, which is also one of the largest programs in the country, um, and our ocean engineering programs. And when you're on that line or you may be going to some of these um, individual information sessions to learn more about our disciplines at Virginia Tech, some of these departments might say, well, we also have a core degree program and majors underneath them. When you're in the first year program, we talk about these 14 core discipline areas, but there are coursework and specializations that you can focus on within the disciplines. So for example, our aerospace and ocean engineering program have tracks or specializations that you can focus on. So maybe you decide that you wanna go into space track or something like that. If you wanted to pursue something in computer science, there's um, programs like data-centric computing that you could focus on. And e even as we progress through our curriculum, there might be new things added with, before you start. So as I mentioned, we are here to support you in the first year program. And along with that, we have outstanding faculty, also outstanding academic advisors and researchers here within the program to support your transition to Virginia Tech. You would work with um, us in the advising program through new student orientation activities. And then you would also be assigned someone that you could um, ask questions of about, especially what are the differences between all these disciplines? Also learning more about that transition from the first year to your specific discipline. We would be the experts in those areas. Also providing you a variety of resources and support dedicated to workshops on time management, and um, some kind of study skill strategies and helping you have those resources available to you. So this um, uh, Im image here highlights our general engineering advising team. And um, of course, you see us all here in the pandemic and um, social distancing in our home offices, um, providing virtual one-on-one -on -one advising through the Zoom environment. And that of course has been because of the COVID-19 pandemic. One of the other exciting things that we have within our first year program here at Virginia Tech is our hands-on Frith first year engineering design laboratory. So it is um, a place where you can go and use 3D printers, laser engravers, CN uh, CNC routers, and all kinds of other cool tools. If you're into wanting to get your hands on some of these projects, we also utilize our Frith first year design lab within our Foundations of Engineering courses. The really cool thing about this space is it is dedicated to first year engineering students. So you don't have to worry about not having a space to be able to tinker and work on projects. You're able to do that in this space. So also just another image to highlight the Virginia Tech campus. Of course, I'm sure this photo was taken on our wonderful football field over in Lane Stadium. And then the last thing that I wanted to share with you today is as part of our first year engineering program within engineering education, we also offer study abroad opportunities through our rising sophomore abroad program. And of course, due to the uh, global pandemic, some of our study abroad programs, of course, were put on hold, but we are hopeful to be able to revive those programs um, back in uh, the future semesters. Um, I've served as a faculty leader on some of these programs, um, traveled with students to Dominican Republic in the past, um, to China, to the United Kingdom and Ireland. And right before um, COVID-19 hit and, and tra put travel bans on all of us, we um, had a trip for the group I was working with to go to New Zealand and Australia. So lots of different opportunities. Um, we're really not sure what's going to happen in the future with what kinds of countries we'll be able to go to, um, depending on, of course, travel regulations and the pandemic. But we are hopeful to be able to continue to offer these great Rising Sophomore Broad Program classes. So what happens in this program is during your second semester at Virginia Tech, if you're admitted to the program, 
you do apply, you will take a global engineering class, which talks about global competencies in engineering during the spring semester. And then you would see and other students uh, typically for two weeks um, shortly after the spring semester. So those are the main nuts and bolts of what we wanted to share with you today in today's presentation about the first year engineering program. I would like to invite you to bookmark our engineering education website. Um, I do have lots of uh, data ready for you in case you have specific questions that you'd like to ask us about. And of course, if I don't know the answer live for you today, I would be more than happy to take down your information and be able to get back with you with anything we're unable to answer for you. One of the questions that actually just came through today in email was about double majoring. In the College of Engineering, we often get students who um, are eager to want to double major in um, one major and a another discipline within the College of Engineering. And um, in, in reality, with the engineering curriculum and the way that things are designed, less than 3% of College of Engineering students will do a double major. We have more students doing a major and complementing that with a minor, but the actual double major is less common in engineering than it is in other disciplines. That's pretty consistent with other schools of engineering across the country. Is there a residence hall specifically for engineering students? Yes, so there is a first-year live and learning community that is, I believe, entirely engineering students called Hypatia and Galileo. So if you did want to live in a hall that was specific towards engineering students, it would have to go through that live and learning community. And in addition to living in that hall, there are requirements such as a course that comes with the, um, with the program, but that is an option. Currently um, on the Virginia Tech campus, the, the facility that we have for that Hypatia and Galileo um, living learning community is Hogue. Um, that is the building that we occupy for engineering. All right, so it looks like the next question um, is, is how competitive is it to get into your specific engineering track after the first year of general engineering? Great question. So um, a few details that we didn't go into um, in, the lab, in the actual presentation is that students have to complete a series of nine courses, which are the ones that Dr. Lee kind of highlighted, and 12 GPA hours at Virginia Tech and earn a 3.0 overall GPA to be, uh, to be guaranteed their first choice major. So if a student does complete that first year and have a 3.0 overall GPA, then they can go into any major regardless of what the capacities are for those disciplines. So of course you may be saying, okay, well, like I really wanna go into this major. Are you sure if you have a 3.0, you're guaranteed? Currently, that is the guidelines. If you have the nine changing major classes, 12 GPA hours, and you have that 3.0 overall Virginia Tech GPA, then you are guaranteed your first choice major. Now, to put that in context, after the first semester and first year, the average GPA for our incoming cohort of first year engineering students is a 3.1. So we are guaranteeing um, basically below the average, a, a spot into the student's first choice. When students apply to their uh, major, they get to apply to their top three choices. So they can put in the number one, two, and three and go through that process. Um, but I think that will kind of answer your question. Also, also, it alleviates a lot of stress. A lot of people are like, I really want to do this major and come to Virginia Tech to pursue this major. And as long as you're, of course, meeting basically the average, you would be guaranteed that spot in that discipline. So the next question we have here is, what majors does biomechanics fall under? Hmm, that's a great question. So I could so I could play that, that that particular major could go under a, a variety of different majors. So we could say, okay, number one, it could go under biomedical engineering because there's a mechanics focus on that. You could then look at biomedical, um, you could look at mechanical engineering and maybe do a minor that has some more bio features. You could also look at biological systems engineering and say, okay, well, I want some more of the mechanics pieces. But honestly, at the end of the day, you could probably also pull up some chemical engineering components and do some biomechanics pieces in that. So it really is going to depend upon the specific area, the kinds of careers that a student maybe want to go into. But I, I could see that from an advising perspective, falling into multiple uh, disciplines that a student could pursue here. Yeah. The next one is what classes do you take if you have already completed some of the required classes? So um, it really... <laughs> Let me put this also in context. So I went back and pulled some numbers today just for preparation um, because I think sometimes I, I forget about how 
how much transfer credits new incoming students bring in. Of course, when you're working with an orientation, you feel it, you know it. When you're working with students one-on-one, you're like, wow. But I will say 95% of our students coming into Virginia Tech will come in with some sort of credit. So whether that be advanced placement, dual enrollment, CLEP, Cambridge, IB, transfer from the Virginia Community College or other universities. So that is a high percentage. So in advising, we're pretty much equipped to handle all of that onboarding and moving on into the next level courses. Now, some classes you can move on. So if you don't have, for example, we have our traditional calculus with single variable one and two, you might be able to go on into linear algebra, multivariable or differential equations. So we go all the way down to that line. And in traditional advising and orientation settings, it's probably less than a handful that will have all of those done. But even if you do, there are mechanisms for us to look at what are other choices that you have for your um, first semester of enrollment. Also looking at the sciences. So looking at, do you already have the chemistry done? Do you already have the physics? And all of those kinds of things as far as what will your next semester of classes look like will be kind of facilitated through the new student orientation process. So the next question is from Min. It says, if these students' grades did not go well senior year, will they lose their admission offer? So that's a great question, and I'll just be very honest with you. I, I'm not in the admissions arena, and so that is something that we we didn't mention in the presentation component. But the Office of Undergraduate Admissions at Virginia Tech handles all of the admissions processes for the College of Engineering. So whatever decision-making process, as far as the holistic admission review, all of those things, whether or not admissions offers are um, removed or not, is all handled through that office. And we really don't have play a part in that particular component. So um, in in past, I have seen situations, but it would be a very drastic situation, um, but not a, um, a huge thing. But again, you might wanna follow up with the admissions office on that question at admissions at vt.edu um, and just ask that, them specifically on your situation. That's a very hard question to ask in a general setting as far as like they're probably going to want to know what specific classes went wrong and uh, that kind of thing. All right and then the next question is when will the early decision window start? Oh well I know the uh <laughs> So, again, that's an Office of Undergrad Admissions question, but I will say that we, um, ah, I want to say, let, let's double check this one. Let's go on admissions.vt.edu website and double check that question. Um, I know that offers are usually kind of put out there for early decision around December, so that would probably make sure that you have to apply by October um, of your, um, of the next semester for enrollment at Virginia Tech. Do you know how many students are in the AOE department? That's some specific questions. I'm glad. That's a very <laughs> specific question, but it's a great question. Um, and we, I'm very fearful if I pull the whole spreadsheet, I'll accidentally share something public and I don't want to share it publicly. Um, of course, because it has all these student ID numbers and, and data points. Aerospace, um, I actually just learned this the other day, is ocean, so aerospace and ocean engineering, so it's the, de it's the Department of Aerospace and Ocean Engineering, it's one department at Virginia Tech, has technically two core disciplines, but the degree is actually one degree. So when a student graduates with a uh, Bachelor of Science from that program, it's actually called a Bachelor of Science in Aerospace and Ocean Engineering. And then you could do a major in aerospace or a major in ocean. And our ocean engineering program is one of the top ocean engineering programs in the country. It's also one of the largest um, ocean engineering programs in the country. But to put that in context, they're also in comparison to some other programs, even at Virginia Tech, it's a relatively small major. So in each class, so dealing with like sophomore, junior, and senior, they're probably dealing with about 50 students in the, air, um, the ocean program in each of those classes. So, you know, you're dealing with like 150 total students in that program for, for the um, ocean piece. The aerospace, I, I would venture to be more in a mid-sized program for us. So they're more probably in that three to 600 range. And I know that's a huge range, but that's what I'm gonna ballpark for today. Jaden wanted to know if you would share the screen again that displays the classes that freshmen take in their first year. Sure. Let's go back to this first, it's one of the first slides. 
So this is kind of general terms of our courses because, you know, I know specific like course numbers and names, but I know that they're not consistent across all schools in the country. So if we look at the box on the left, we have our foundations of engineering courses. These are our engineering 1215 and 1216 courses. It's a fall and a spring sequence of classes, typically when a student's admitted in the fall. Then we have first year writing. That's going to be our English 1105, English 1106, typically also fall and spring. However, students do take a little assessment when the, you're admitted to Virginia Tech as part of the admissions process after acceptance. And depending upon your assessment on that, you might be placed out of the first semester of English. Also, of course, English is something that we do get a lot of students bringing in AP credit for. We do accept um, AP credits, IB credits, dual enrollments, those kinds of things based on minimum scores in an AP chart that we can link out to you for the Registrar's Office website where you can look at that. That's the current chart for that. We also have our general chemistry. Our general chemistry also incorporates the lab that goes with that. So we have chemistry 1035 and 1045 is the Virginia Tech course numbers for that. We also have foundations of physics. Now, foundations of physics is the one question I get a lot for incoming students questions about. This is, of course, a calculus-based physics. And uh, our number here is physics 2305. And um, depending on the discipline that a student chooses, typically you have like physics 2305 in the spring semester first year, and then go on to the next second semester of physics in the um, uh second year fall semester, but that's not applicable across every discipline because after that first year, you get very specific into the program that you're wanting to pursue. Our calculus of a single variable, that's going to be a two-part sequence. Usually calculus one is math 1225, calc two, it's actually all labeled calculus of a single variable, one and two is what we internally call it, but it's math 1225 and 1226, and so those are four credit classes each. Usually credit hours dictate how many hours you're in class. Um, typically, we recommend for incoming first year students in their first semester of enrollment to enroll in at least 15 to 17 credit hours. And that allows a kind of a good balance of course load and also helps ensure that you're going to graduate in a four year time frame. And that is also important to keep in mind. So all of our programs are designed to be done in a four year time frame. Um, but of course, lots of things happen along the way. We have a large Corps of Cadets military student population here at Virginia Tech, which has lots of extra classes added to that. Plus students choose to do co-ops, internships, or decide to delay their progress depending on their personal situations. And the last thing we see here is our pathways to general education. Our pathways to general education is a, a series of four categories, or sorry, seven categories that you have to do before you graduate. And that's going to be where some of these classes that because you're an engineering student would automatically fulfill in those categories. But you might have courses in the humanities um, where you could choose classes in um, histories or you could choose psychology, sociologies, and those are all student choices. There are some specific engineering disciplines that prefer like for uh, we call it Pathways to General Education Concept 3, that they might uh, specifically want to take principles of economics. That might be something that that major has dedicated. But all of those little nuances, those will be covered through the new student orientation process that happens after you apply, get offered, and then you decide to accept your offer at Virginia Tech, um, usually the summer before the fall semesters when we would do that process. There are some more questions about applications. So. One is about the process for selecting your major. So like, do you submit, how many do you select one, two, or three? Can you talk through the mm -hmm. that process? Yeah, no, and that's a great question. I think one thing to think about is when you're applying to Virginia Tech, you put your number one choice. And so that you put that I want to major in mining engineering, for example, and you're reviewed into Virginia Tech uh, based into general engineering based on that choice. But during that at first year at Virginia Tech, after you're admitted as a general engineering student, you then can put on your application from general engineering to get into your specific discipline, which was the question previously, uh, that process. Then you get to put your top three choices on the application. But when you're applying to Virginia Tech, you just put your number one choice. There's a question about whether it's possible to transfer from the College of Arts and Sciences into engineering in your sophomore, junior year. It's possible, but it's no guarantees. And I think that's the way to look at it. Um, 
it, you know, they, they, we try in engineering to not completely close all access to the college because we want students to pursue engineering, right? That's a huge goal for um, the field of engineering in general. And so we do have processes for students to follow, and we do have a transitional advisor in our college that helps students understand what courses you need to take to make that transition. But not all courses are available to non-engineering students um, in every semester. So for example, our Foundations of Engineering classes would not be available to a non-GE student in the fall semester. So there would be a process that you'd have to move that class to spring and you'd have to take probably a summer class to stay on track. So it is possible, but I will also say it's no guarantee of admission. And some of our actual programs, uh, once a student does complete the nine change of major courses, 12 GPA hours, um, for a non-engineering student, that 3.0 guarantee that I mentioned earlier does not apply. That 3.0 guarantee is only for students admitted to the College of Engineering through the Office of Undergrad Admissions as a general engineering major. So next we have Two questions that are very related to scheduling that I think you could probably address simultaneously. So one is Christina's curious about how scheduling works if AP scores are not yet available. And then I believe it is Boris has a question about dual majors. So I think if you can talk a little bit about how scheduling works at the very beginning and how the advisors work with students who want to major in more than one thing, I think we can hit both of those at once. Absolutely. So I think... Um, in, in relation to the um, AP scores, that, that's, that's our common problem, <laughs> our common uh, uh, challenge, let's say, with the new student orientation process, right? So we want to know from you what kind of AP scores you're going to get before you are placed or recommended to take a certain class. But the way that we have been approaching our advising uh, for orientation is we're going to give you the tools to understand no matter what your AP exam score is, what your next level of classes would be. So, for example, if you are taking the AP BC exam for calculus and you're not sure if you're going to get a four or five and you might end up with a three. Well, we're going to show you the charts. We're going to show you the information through the orientation onboarding process. So you know, okay, if I do get a three, this is my Virginia Tech equivalency and then this is the next math. It's pretty much a logic kind of string of what goes next based on that score. So we are well equipped to handle that. Like I mentioned earlier, 95% of our students come in with some sort of credit. So we gotcha if that happens and we'll take care of it. Now, it might be that you want to wait for your scores to uh, be officially awarded before you uh, make modifications to your schedule your first semester here. Um, a lot of times in the state of Virginia across the board, um, advanced placement classes are scores are released in around the 1st of July. And that's still within the span of new student orientation processes for us. So you would always have the ability to schedule a later orientation too, if that made you more comfortable. Now, related to the whole dual major, civil engineering, computer science, Boris, this is a great question. Actually, that's why I started thinking more about the data for today's presentation is because I had a parent ask me that specific question. Maybe it was your parent. <laughs> um, no, it wasn't. Name didn't match. But, it, well, it could, right? So, um, the um, civil engineering and computer science double major, I actually pulled the data for everyone that's currently enrolled in the College of Engineering at Virginia Tech, and zero students is doing that combination right now. However, we do recommend that students seriously think more about doing an undergraduate degree in, for example, civil engineering, and then thinking about a master's degree instead. That's where, that's why also the College of Engineering percentage of students doing double majors is, is much lower, is because we encourage students to finish the four-year degree out graduate, and then consider graduate school for that advanced accelerated degree. Because if you're thinking about just adding on extra classes at the undergrad level, 
that's going to take more time just to get an undergrad degree. Whereas if you finish your master, your undergrad degree, you go get your master's degree in a year and a half, two years, depending. Um, then all of that combined is probably looking at no more than six years, right? Versus taking five plus years to do two undergrad degrees. So that's always been our stance in engineering here at Virginia Tech is we encourage that go on for graduate level degree versus trying to do the two double majors, the undergrad level. Also, there's not a lot of overlap in the classes beyond the first year. And that's also really nice about why we have the first year is that has that common landing place. You get your um, your yourself situated and then you can start taking classes in your specific specialty. And do we accept Cambridge or Pearson certificates to skip a semester of English? We do accept Cambridge. I do not believe we accept Pearson's. I believe I've asked that question specifically, but Cambridge is an acceptable one. You can look at our Virginia Community College equivalencies. And of course, this is based on the current guides, which could change before you're admitted here, but they they usually only change to the benefit of the student. They usually don't change too much to impact um, a student negatively. So that is a great resource for all of you who are asking about those AP credits, dual enrollment transfer, those kinds of things. So if someone has a question about when applying as a freshman, is the admittance decision made by major? Mm. Um, it, it does vary. And like I said earlier, the College of Engineering does um, does not play a role in the actual admissions process for Virginia Tech College of Engineering. We do provide some guidance to the Office of Undergrad Admissions, but um, they handle all of the admissions decisions. Um, but you do want to put the major that you have the most interest in when applying. And that's going to be the case not only in engineering across the board. That's how we have handled it in the past. And then the next question is from the VETA about how many classes 15 hours is and what the minimum amount should be. Um, so I'll kind of answer the minimal amount first. Um, you need at least 12 credit hours and 12 credit hours. So most classes are three credits. But now when we get in engineering, our math is four credits. Our science is four credits. So we don't really adhere to the same um like three credit sequence that you might find in other colleges across the university. So we have that variable credit of like physics is going to be four credits. Your chemistry is going to be three plus one because it's four credits with the lab. Um, and so 15 hours typically is going to be about that, you know, three, six, nine, 12, 15, like five classes or so, um, and gives you kind of that round of course load. We typically say for a brand new first year student, we recommend 15 to 17, because if a student does join our living learning community, there might be an extra class that they enroll in. Or if a student is a core cadet student, they might have military obligation classes or even other living learning community courses that Virginia Tech would have for that particular community. The minimum is going to be 12 credit hours, and that is going to be in relation more for full-time status. 12 credit hours or four classes at three credits each is going to be the minimum that the university wants to see for living on campus, or if you're an athlete, um, NCA, double eligibility, all those kinds of rules. If you are a core cadet student, international students also have to have minimum of 12 hours for F-1 visa status. So those are some of the key reasons a student would need to be full time. Uh, a lot about the residency is the 12 hours. So we say 15 to 17 to give a buffer. Um, if you're in 15 and maybe a student needs to drop a class or something like that, then that still keeps their full time status in check. So the next two questions are both about support systems, one related to how we help students land co-ops, internships, and jobs, and the other one related to how we help students who might be struggling academically. So here at Virginia Tech, we are unique in that we have our own career and professional development building, not just an office like some schools, like it is dedicated space for helping students find co-ops, helping students find internships, our College of Engineering student uh, organizations are also very active on planning some of the largest student-reigned career fairs in the country. That's our Student Engineers Council. They run Engineering Expo every fall semester. In the spring, we have Cameo, which is another um, event for finding co-ops and internships. So we do have a robust system in place for helping students find co-ops and internships. Uh, 
in the college in general through those student organizations, but also our career and professional development office has assistance with helping with resume writing and um, interview techniques and um, helping um, utilize our handshake system, which is the platform Virginia Tech uses for helping students find co-ops, internships, and full-time employment. So in addition to the what I would say I learned a lot in the first year program, which are these common big career fairs, a lot of the disciplines will also host mini career fairs, depending on the size of the department, it could be a big career fair, right? So um, they bring in employers who are really trying to hire that particular discipline. So that is pretty common for us to have that. In addition to that, we have a very robust resources and support uh, network at Virginia Tech to help students be successful uh, section of the website of engineering education, which talks about academic tutoring. And of course, we're going to have tutoring for all the basic first year courses, our math, our sciences, those kinds of courses. But even some of our general education classes will have some tutoring. We have a student success center here on campus, which is our tutoring. Let's just call that like our tutoring lab. But they offer seminars on time management, procrastination, study strategies. These are all optional things that students can join. In engineering education, we have developed um, in our advising team an online canvas, which is our student learning management platform. Uh, tutorials and videos to series on time management related to engineering, um, how to study, how to take appropriate notes, those kinds of things, which uh, which has been really useful, especially in, in this online environment. Um, because before we would host a lot of these workshops face to face. And depending on the topic, you might have a good turnout or not. And so this is a, an on-demand platform that we've just recently launched for, um, for that support mechanism. Now, it's not just about the academics, though, right? It's about do we have peer mentoring? And yes, we do have a very, very um, just outstanding Center for Enhancement of Engineering Diversity Office that manages our living learning communities, our peer mentoring programs, lots of ways for students to connect with each other. Uh, we also have a very, um, in the College of Engineering over the last year, we've also embedded a counselor from our counseling center here on campus who specifically is specialized liaison with the College of Engineering for our Cook Counseling Center. So for mental health concerns, for students who might be struggling, um, for for various um, types of things, anxiety, depression, all those kinds of things, our counseling center here is here to support students in that. Also, they have a lot of really cope, good coping mechanisms for stress management, uh, study strategies in that context as well. So Women's Center, lots of really good support for students here. So what happens if you do not take the AP exam, but you're enrolled in the AP class? Good for you, Riley. Uh, but you don't get any credit, Virginia Tech, for it. You just, of course, understand the content and, and the information, but you would not be uh, allowed to move on into the next level of a course here without taking the AP exam and earning the appropriate minimal score. So content-wise, for your own understanding and learning, that's fantastic. But in order for that to ad to advantage you for moving on in courses and progression, you do want to take the actual um, exam and get an appropriate score, a minimum score on that exam. And I think that answer is very similar to the response I would give to Mark's question about whether learning the basics of a programming language such as C++ would be better prepared. So even though that's not the language that is covered in the course, we do find that students who have some familiarity with programming it just helps, it just makes it easy to learn additional languages. So if that is a skill you already have or a skill you're interested in developing, it definitely would help you to start doing some of that learning before you get here. So the next question is, when it comes to applying to Virginia Tech as a dual enrollment transfer, would you still have the choice to apply for the general engineering major? So uh, the current uh, process at Virginia Tech, um, is that any student admitted to the College of Engineering is admitted to general engineering, regardless if you're a first year student or a transfer. So perhaps Josh, you're at, Joshua, you're asking about maybe the Virginia Community College Guaranteed Admissions Agreement. 
um, which is something with, that we have in the College of Engineering for our Virginia Community College partners. Whereas if you go to a community college, you complete your associate's degree and making sure it, of course, ticks all the boxes as the appropriate associate's degree, have a 3.2 GPA, then you're guaranteed admission to the College of Engineering as general engineering. So that's how that would work at Virginia Tech. And do you know if they've made living on campus mandatory for next year? Has that decision came down the pipeline yet? I, I feel like it has, that it will be a requirement. Um, be, because when the requirement was um, adjusted to, to be a little more flexible, it wasn't, let's just say, We'll put a pin on that one. I don't know the answer officially, but I feel like I have been in meetings recently where it is a requirement. But I do know that if you are um, a, a student who has been a, um, applied to Virginia Tech, you are offered admission and you then have accepted your offer of admission, you will start to get housing information very soon and that will all be outlined there. Do you know anything about the Virginia Tech incubator? I don't. I actually Googled it because I saw that question come in and I was like, mm, I don't I don't really get uh, that's not the space that I play in as far as understanding all that. Um, I do know that's our startup Pokies incubator space, but I, I will not claim to know anything about that. So I'm sorry about that. Yeah, I was about to say similarly. I was like, I've heard of it, but I do not yeah. know a lot about it. And that's what I was trying to think about. Even the space that used to be over where they're now doing some construction around. Um, the Turner Street construction, there used to be um, kind of an incubator space there for students. Um, but the name escapes me for that as well. Uh, Spark, maybe? Spark might have been the name of that. It was about whether or not we encourage students to live in the engineering LLC. Do you want me to answer that? You want to answer? You can. I have a bias answer. I would encourage students. I think one of the benefits of living in the living learning communities is it provides a lot of infrastructure. And I think that for some students, they might feel like it's more structured than they needed. But I think for a lot of students, you can really benefit from having the additional course that kind of explains some of the things that might not necessarily be clear to you. But the additional benefit of living in a dorm where everyone is going through a similar experience and has similar due dates and has similar tests to study for. So I think unless a student is strongly against living in the LLC and just has different plans for what they want to do, or they already know people here, or they are kind of approaching it from a different perspective, I would encourage them to at least look into Hypatia and Galileo to see if that makes sense for them. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I would concur with that response. I think, you know, we definitely have bias because we're also researchers in this space and think more about like what are the advantages and what does the data show for students who do participate in living learning communities in relation to um, retention in the College of Engineering, graduation rates, all of those kinds of things. Um, our data does show that those students do tend to have higher um higher retention and graduation rates than students who don't participate in living learning communities. So um, definitely, definitely give that some serious consideration. Then there's a question about how COVID is being handled currently. My understanding is people are still social distancing and wearing masks and a majority, if not almost all of the courses are still online. So I think we're practicing the best practices that are still being promoted at the national level still. Is summer orientation mandatory? Um, it, it is as much as we possibly can make it, right? So I think um, um, when it comes to working with your advisor, working with your class registration, those kinds of things, then, you know, you, you want to do those things so that you are on the right, you're setting yourself up for success in that very first semester of enrollment. The university, um, um, the university's university level orientation program um, is something that we also have always bundled in as a thing you should do for Virginia Tech success. It is part of that student affairs transition model for um, ensuring that students are made aware of all the things to be successful here. So 
specific details about li living on campus, specific details about academic support structures. Um, you get to meet other students. So it is a great opportunity. Um, I do know we are trying at the orientation level because that's kind of my big space. I, I run as the director of orientation for the College of Engineering um, in my role. I mean, it, it's a no brainer. You definitely should participate in orientation. But it's also this place where we're trying to offer more flexibility for students and families to be able to participate in, uh, of course, this year, uh, even moving forward to summer 2021, we will have a virtual orientation experience. Um, and I think for later than that, 2022 and future is still to be determined on how we can make all those things work. Uh, oh, yes. And to answer that piece, is that when your schedule said yes? Um, it's two parts. You have a university level orientation, a college level orientation that's class registration advising. So it's kind of a two piece um, requirement. And so, yes, that is when you will do all of the orientation and class registration. Then the first day of class in fall of 2021 is August 23rd. Uh, but we really, really appreciate you um, coming today. Um, if you are thinking about applying to Virginia Tech, I encourage you to definitely do your due diligence, do your research, and make a smart choice for yourself and your family. Um, but if you ever have questions or things that you need um, asked or answered from an engineering perspective, I'm always willing to kind of help as much as I possibly can. Um, I typically, from my role in our advising team, we work primarily with students who have been um, offered admission to the College of Engineering and accept their offer. And the communication you may have received about today's event from Taylor Cup, she handles the majority of our prospective student inquiries. And if Taylor has something that she's not able to respond, she will often forward it to me and me vice versa to her. So don't be afraid to reach out. We are always willing to answer your questions that you may have. Thank you. Have a good day.